intrepid viewers. Hi there and welcome along to the Jennifer Kirk channel. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a, an unboxing and a review video today because uh, while well, I've been shopping I've been exercising the old credit card. It's had time to recover from Christmas and New Year so I thought I'd give it a little bit of exercise and uh, trotted off to the Harbin Hobbies website on the internet. Now Harbin Hobbies, a little bit of background here, it's a model shop up in Edinburgh and they do an awful lot of Scottish specific uh, commissions. Uh, not just back when they do do um, other things as well, there's some engaged stuff they do too. But I'm of course most interested in the Backman Special Commissions. I am one of these people who's a little bit of a sucker. You put limited edition or special commission on the box and Muggins here will buy it. So uh, without further ado, um, they just released two new uh, Backman Special uh, Commission exclusive to Harbin Hobbies. Uh, in, in Edinburgh uh, wagons and we've got the first one here which we're going to have a look at is the Lothian Coal Company New Battle. This is uh, one of the Backman standard uh, seven plank endor wagon, endor tipping wagons. That was so that these wagons could be used um, in real life uh, for coal traffic and then emptied very very quickly by basically tipping them up on end and all the coal just falls out through the door. So much better than a couple of blokes with a load of shovels and a pickaxe. Um, so we're going to have a look in here. It's catalogue number 37-076U and we can see on the end seven plank wagon at New Battle produced exclusively for Harbin Hobbies. All of these exclusives always identify themselves by um, saying who they were commissioned by but also more importantly perhaps on the catalogue number we have a letter on the end and with the special commissions they always start with Z and work backwards through the alphabet um, to differentiate them from the standard release models which start with the bare number and then have an A, B, C, D suffix uh, and so forth to distinguish different runs of a similar wagon. Um, so uh, right, let's have a look here. This is the new style Backman packaging with the uh, identifiable by slightly lighter blue and we've got the red stripe at the bottom so you can see these easily on the shelf and I much prefer these to the slightly older darker plain blue with the white stripe packaging um, because they don't have that awful little piece of paper in the box um, which sat behind the plastic um, and I, I really do uh, empathise with uh, the people in the factory in China who had to package these things because can you imagine having to put thousands of these in their box with a little horrible piece of paper that would continually catch inside and scrunch up. It's horrible. Uh, but we don't have that now, so less packaging, good for the environment. But inside we've got the traditional uh, Backman uh, plastic uh, protection around the wagon, holds it nice in the box, and also in transit protects it from getting knocked and squashed. They're quite good at doing that. Uh, opens just pull the tab, so like pull the tab, jump out of the plane, but in this case pull the tab and it jumps out of the box and we've got this uh, lovely little wagon here in a sort of uh, a satin finish black and uh, I do like the satin finish because matte sometimes just doesn't really quite look right and again gloss can just look a bit abnormal but satin really works on models of this scale. A uh, little piece of plastic there which just stops the, uh, I think in transit when it comes across from China in the shipping container which just stops the plastic surround from rubbing on the detail in the bottom of the wagon. Uh, so we put that to one side and it's very fine detail here. We've got white rim tyres on the wheels. These were actually on the full sized one uh, to make it easier to spot the cracks if the wheels themselves cracked because obviously that's bad. If the wheel cracks and it goes out on the railways they can literally just shatter and cause a nasty train wreck. Um, so by painting the rims white um, it made the cracks stand out and they could be spotted before they reached a point where the wheel would uh, necessarily shatter. The printing on this wagon is uh, very neat, very crisp. We've got the white lettering but it's then uh, highlighted with red at the background to make it stand out. And then we've got the Scottish thistle there. Now I'm told a lot of these designs that were on uh, early wa railway wagons were more about the fact that so many people couldn't actually read and write so they would just be the words would mean nothing to them but the pictures were much much more uh, easily readily identifiable to tell railway staff 
where the wagon should be going. So that's why a lot of these have the little pictures, either crossed keys or the Staffordshire knot, or in this case the Scottish thistle, just to help the identification of those wagons. So uh, there we have it. We've got the slimline couplings in the NEM pocket, so it can be easily changed for a different type of coupling if you so desire. Very easy to deal with, very free running wheels. All in all, another good offering from the Backman Stable in an unusual Scottish commission. So we're going to put that to one side and we're going to move on to the second wagon. Here we have the second wagon which I bought. Now, Harbour Hobbies have done quite a lot of commissions over the years and I've got quite a few of them downstairs. But more recently, there's just these, these two available as new ones. And this one's only just come out. This is 37 dash 650S. Again, like we said with the new battle wagon, the S um, is, they've worked back through the alphabet from Z, got to S, and this is another produced exclusively for Harbour and Hobbies, 14 tonne tank wagon, Scottish and Newcastle Breweries Limited, um, and it's uh, a slightly more interesting prototype subject, and that's something that Harbour and Hobbies does quite, quite well. They've done a lot of commissions with the uh, sloped roof, with the cottage roof, uh, salt type wagon which is much different from the usual fare of the coal wagons which yes I know the new battle wagon is but they've gone for a tank wagon with this in a nice colourful livery uh, and we've got similar style packaging none of that horrible piece of white paper that gets caught on everything but inside we've got the slightly different design of the plastic inner uh, dome so it doesn't damage any of the intricate walkways on the wagon so open that up and again we've got uh, a few bits of packaging in there just to, to protect the wagon in transit. Uh, they tend to get statically charged and stick to your fingers. But we've got, here we are, Scottish and Newcastle Breweries Limited, maroon uh, tank body and fittings, and the white underframe. And uh, one thing that really does spring out uh, here is the very nice representation. It's probably quite difficult to see. We'll try and do a close-up of it. Of the Scottish and Newcastle Brewery logo on the ends of the tank. And this is something that I, I suspect that even with a magnifying glass, this would still look very, very sharp under what can actually be at times quite cruel magnification. The printing on this wagon is superb. Um, it's an unbraked 14 tonne wagon uh, with the overhead walkways. This is similar to the um, ICI caustic wagon, which Batman did some time ago. Um, lovely wagon, gives a bit of variety to the special commissions in the display cabinets. And again, another wonderful wagon from Harbin Hobbies. Uh, the ladders are a little bit delicate. We're going to have to handle it quite carefully there because they're not actually fastened at the bottom. And uh, one false move and you can probably ping them off um, and uh, have to be quite careful at gluing them back together. One thing I have noticed is perhaps a little minor detraction is that the strapping on the tank doesn't actually meet the mounting points on the, on the bottom properly. There is a very small gap, which is probably made worse by the fact that the underframe behind it is a, is a very crisp sort of off-white colour. Um, but on the real wagon, obviously, they would be bolted down, otherwise the tank would fall off in transit. Um, but, you know, we can... Uh, in fact, it's actually only on one side of the wagon, so uh, it's just a minor fitting error. But we can let that one slide, because overall, I'd say a good 9 out of 10 for this wagon. Uh, anyway, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Two great wagons there, both from Harbin Hobbies in Edinburgh. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it, share it, let other people know of the wonderful reviews and trade videos that we do here. And uh, also look back through the channel, subscribe to it, you'll be the first to know when new videos are posted. But looking back, you've got all of those trains running by videos, vinyl reviews and all sorts of other stuff. It's just a cornucopia of Jenny goodness and you know you want to have a look back through. You take very good care of yourself and uh, we'll be back with more videos. We're going to keep them coming with uh, your daily dose of Jenny awesomeness. And, uh, well, I'll see you next time.